Alrighty, how's it going, Block Survival fans of the internet? My name for today is Matthew, and today we're going to answer the question, the question that is really as old as the game itself. Who would win in a fight between two characters? No luck, no bullshit, no falling behind, no pulling ahead, nothing but the raw factors of that character facing off against another character until the death. Now, before we get started, as a reminder, I'm going to be aiming to keep this series going on a weekly basis, so if you want to see more of these, uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button and like the video if you enjoyed it. Uh, you can find the voting link for you guys to vote for the next week's matchup in the description. So make sure you vote for who you want to see facing off. So today, getting into it, we have a very interesting and extremely common matchup that's going to be Fiora versus Yuki. Now, I chose these characters as our first contenders for a couple of reasons. The biggest being that, as I mentioned, it's very common to see these two characters face off. They have uh, very similar weapon types, and they start off in very similar parts of the map. So, it's a very common thing to see, to actually see these two characters fight. So, I thought that this information might actually be kind of helpful to the community uh, in that regard. Uh, the other reason is because, in my opinion, these are two of the best balanced characters in the entire game. They're they're very good, uh, but they're not really at risk of getting nerfed at the moment. I wouldn't say, at the very least, in my opinion. Uh, other than Hun Wu and Leon, I suppose, uh, who I don't really count because their usage is always like stupidly high. But other than, other than those two characters, Fiora and Yuki have some of the highest, most consistent usage rates of any character, coming in pretty close with Adela and Lee Dalin. So today we've got a lot of really fun tests here lined up for you guys, so we're going to begin it with the final destination round. No items, no abilities, no healing, stats and passives only here. So we redid this test several times to try to kind of isolate the experiment from uncontrollable RNG, like crits or misses and things like that, and these were the results that we found. So I'll just play them off here for you. Watch me closely, father. Ah, a dupe. Ah. Ah. Such a puff. Uh, come out and puff. Uh, such a puff. Uh, such a puff. Uh, come out and puff. Uh, Watch me closely. Such ha! A ha! Come out and ha! Such a ha! Oh, such a ha! A ha! Such a Huh. 
So you'll see, even though they hit for about the same damage initially, Yuki just has that extra health kind of grin and bear it through Fiora's attacks, ultimately leaving the ring, ultimately leaving the ring as the winner in almost every test that we ran. Now, I really want to draw your attention back to the very first trial footage. You see here that even though it features some pretty obvious luck elements. The luck is heavily in the Fiora's favor, and she still can't break through Yuki's defenses. And you notice that even as they both uh, level up, it just adds more insult to injury with this. So the main thing to notice in these examples is that even though the Yuki got the first hit in the majority of these trials, the Fiora typically didn't die just one hit away from killing the Yuki. If this was the case, then obviously the results would kind of indicate that whoever hits first would typically get the win. But in the examples we show you, Yuki always basically had enough HP to at least take two hits and retaliate back. So what this means is that in a scenario where neither player has abilities off cooldown to use, the Yuki will very consistently come out on top, and if not kill the Fiora, he will be very it'll be very easy for him to force her out, uh, and even with luck going uh, heavily against him as well. So not to mention, of course, that he will still be at a pretty comfortable amount of health, even after the fact. But obviously, Block Survival is a game about abilities and about using the kit your character provides to their fullest potential. So our next test, we're focused almost entirely on controlling the interactions of both characters with their abilities here. Now, Yuki is a bit of a strange case because one of his abilities relies on perfect fit being intact. Uh, which ever since the animation cancel glitch has become increasingly harder to kind of pull off. So in essence, Perfect Fit is in its truest sense a 50-50. Otashi can be extremely effective if Yuki is able to land that initial hit. And if he's not able to land that initial hit, it's kind of heavily favored against him in the trials that we ran. So we set up tests to see the results of when Yuki lands that first hit and alternatively when Fiora lands that first hit. And in both cases, Fiora, of course, will be fighting with counterattack uh, as an active for her to use. Uh, just for clarification, obviously, counterattack is an activated ability, not a combat ability, so Itachi would not disable this ability, which obviously is going to be making it valid as a valid resource for our testing here. Such a... Come out and such 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 a such a such a come out and So we noticed some pretty interesting things once we started including the abilities. Just like we thought, counterattack drastically increased Fiora's combat performance. The biggest restriction on her effectiveness, of course, was the duration of the ability, and it made, as because of that, it made even a single miss during counterattack devastating for the Fiora. 
Uh, but we found within a controlled environment, Counter Attack was able to let Fiora beat Yuki fairly consistently. And what this translates to is that in game, Counter Attack has the potential to force Yuki to retreat. And this, uh, this could in this could in turn be kind of a huge turning point. Turning point. <laughs> excuse me, for the Fiora player, as as pretty much any amount of time un uncontested in an area like Uptown gives you phenomenal development potential. Uh, in the time that Yuki backs off, you have the chance to find Katana, or get started on your Twin Blades, and then when the Yuki tries to return, now he's at a pretty big disadvantage rate here, even though we're back to kind of the same scenario that we were at the, the very beginning here, with no abilities. Now, the important thing to kind of highlight here is that the matchup was much closer than the original kind of no abilities test. And this means that outside of a controlled environment, other factors can make this result sway kind of back and forth either way. Enough misses or crits in favor of the Yugi player could result in the Yugi player winning all out. Whereas in the previous tests, even with kind of misses or crits in favor of the Fjord player, the Fjord was still typically the loser in that scenario. Now moving on, it was relatively easy to trial these characters against each other in the early game, but we had a lot of trouble deciding how to test these characters when it comes to the late game. So this is the method that we came up with. We began the game by meeting at the well, where we each attacked each other seven times. And this was, we chose this number because it was the closest we could really get to getting our health bars to zero without actually killing the other player. So we did this to give ourselves a little bit of a jump start in mastery and experience just kind of at the beginning of the game. We then each crafted the same armor and the same weapons so that the experience we gained would be pretty much the exact same. No one would have an advantage in experience, anything like that. And then we would meet up later in the game once we'd each gotten to level 9 with approximately the same master. If anyone had higher master than the other, then we would just go hunt uh, hunt a few, more, a few more animals. We also, I believe hunted a dog and a crow at least once and then i think we killed uh, a bear once each or something like that uh, we hunted a few animals uh, essentially and then like i said we just uh went around and hunted more animals until we got our mastery to be relatively close uh, i'm gonna put screenshots screenshots up that we took before we actually ended up meeting up again uh, up on the screen for you guys to see uh, but then anyways like i said we met up once again and we tried to kind of reproduce the first trial that we did in this video being the kind of final destination style of fighting to the death. Now, because of how complex the setup was for this, and again, because some of the trials had to be kind of excluded because of uncontrollable factors like a lot of misses or a lot of crits, we've only really got one trial to show you guys right here. Uh, but what we want to talk about here is how the results were fairly similar to the re results we actually had at the beginning, which would kind of suggest a trend that you can generally extrapolate from just analyzing the character stats. That being, both characters' stats scale kind of similarly, and their damage is very, very often comparable. Such a useless presser. Come out. Ha! A d- Ha! Such a- Ha! Such a- so outside of the tests for just a second, we'll consider some theory here. So in a final 1v1, Fiora could very easily take advantage of corner attack to give her that extra edge, assuming both players scaled approximately evenly. Having significantly higher mastery than when you first started also really improves this matchup for the Fiora as well, as the Fiora is going to be far less likely to miss her attacks when she is using corner attack. But while, as I said before, the damage they both deal is very comparable, it can't be denied that in this matchup, the, the Fjord definitely relies on Counter Attack to pull ahead uh, in damage against the Yuki player. So what does this all mean? It's time to go over the results. So in the early game, if it hasn't been obvious enough, the Yuki will typically be the favored character in this matchup. Counter Attack has the pot potential to let Fjord overtake him, but with the reduced accuracy at the beginning of the game, coupled with the fact that Fjord relies heavily on landing all her attacks when the ability is active, to really have a chance of pulling ahead Plus the fact that she really has to time counterattack perfectly to really see good results versus the Yuki player. With all these things in mind, the early game is going to be seeing the Yuki player coming out on top in the majority of the time. Now when it comes to the mid game, I would say it starts to become a much closer game. This is the part of the game where the better player will truly shine. Uh, the smarter and more creative plays with their abilities, 
coupled with kind of competent healing and good combat etiquette. Uh, these are kind of the more governing factors of who is going to be coming out on top rather than just which character is going to be more favored in this scenario. And then for the late game, this one, like I said, was very difficult to test, but we are going to say that in a game where both players are fairly on par, I would say that the Fiora player is going to be favored pushing into this late game. Corner attack is a little bit easier to manage and a little bit easier to use when you're playing against less players and you can scare people out of areas very quickly uh, with uh, with this ability. And that can be key to securing certain things such as Wickling or a desired location that you want to just farm for items or even the final bear, final two bears of the game. This, of course, plus the fact that weapon polishing can have the potential to give you a really big time advantage should the Yugi player get a defect, and the scales are tipped slightly in the favor of the Fiora. Now, of course, these are just my opinions, you're free to disagree with me, but these are just kind of what I found from testing and trying things out and seeing, seeing what we could see. But that's just me, so what did you guys think? Do you agree or disagree with any of our kind of testing methods? Who do you want to see to do good out next week? Uh, please keep in mind that this is the first video in the series, or what I'm hoping to be a series, so hopefully we can increase the production value as we go along. So I uh, hope you can bear with us, and yeah, I guess I'll see you guys next time. Uh -huh.